The research question we try to address in this study is whether this matters for free word recall, particularly if words have different spatial associations. So there are words like carpet, for example, which are associated more with a horizontal uh, plane, uh, versus ladder, which clearly have a vertical association. Now, the so our assumption was that if word concepts are amodal symbols, so they're not grounded in perception or something like this, there's no reason why it should matter apart from why, why this should matter. So how you present them either horizontally or vertically, um, apart from perhaps vertical reading being more effortful in general. Right? There's evidence from that, from the eye tracking literature as well. On the other hand, if word concepts are perceptual, it could matter in the sense that perceptual encoding of the word itself may support accessing it, its meaning, right? So it depends on how you read something like carpet or ladder, dependent uh, uh, how you read it uh, uh, for encoding and later recall of these words. Okay, so after framing this research question, you came up with concrete hypotheses that were inspired by the previous findings and so on. So basically we uh, claimed that a word's spatial association, whether it's horizontal association or vertical association, and how it's encoded, that is horizontal versus vertical reading, should interact when predicting word recall performance. So more concretely, recall performance should be better when words are presented congruently rather than incongruently with their spatial associations. That is, horizontal words like carpet presented horizontally or read horizontally, or vertical words like ladder presented or read vertically. Okay, and then we had ideas of how one can measure that. So recall performance can be measured in various ways. And we've thought of two mutually non-exclusive ways to do that. So one, of course, looking at the likelihood of correct word recall, whether a word is correctly recalled or not, after having previously studied it, the more words you recall, the better. Uh, and uh, the other measure we considered was retrieval rank of a recalled word in the recall list. So if we give people a list of words to study that are arranged in various ways, and they later have to recall it, so in what order are these words uh, uh, recalled? So that could give an idea of the ease of retrieval uh, of a recalled word, right? And uh, we postulated that the predicted interaction must be confirmed at uh, a p-value of 0.025, so not the conventional 5% levels, because we had two um, dependent variables here, and we didn't fully insist that the effect should show up in both, right? So, and when you when you don't insist in that, that means uh, you have double the chance of committing at least one type two uh, type one error, and therefore we adjusted our p-values. Um, Accordingly. Okay, now, first of all, we had to come up with a list of good words that we could study. So we had, just based on our own intuitions, we came up with 129 initial candidate words, which we pre-tested in an online questionnaire using Qualtrics. Uh, and 91 participants rated each can candidate. So each participant saw all words and they had to rate each candidate words just on a scale from zero to 10 for both horizontal and vertical association like so. So please read rate it. So that's basically what they saw in Qualtrics, right? There was a list of words and next to each word, there was a text box for horizontal association, type in a number from zero to 10 and a text box for vertical association, number from zero to 10, and basically representing your uh, spatial association. So where zero represents no association with that dimension altogether, and 10, very strong uh, association. Why did we do it in this way? Because it turns out actually there are words like banister or gelender in Ruhrgebiet's German, and um, that, that score quite high on both dimensions. So uh, we wanted to separate it out like this. Okay, after doing, doing that, we selected 43 horizontal association words like punch, road, runway, horizon, carpet, and so forth, which achieved a mean horizontal rating greater than seven, so quite high up in the horizontal association dimension, and a mean vertical rating smaller than three. So quite low down in the vertical association scale. And conversely, 51 vertical association words like rain, rocket, shower, ladder, tree, and so forth, with a mean horizontal rating 
quite low, so smaller than three, and a mean vertical rating greater than seven. So we basically wanted to separate it out maximally, right? And that, then we ended up with these 94 words, 43 horizontal association, 51 vertical association. So far, so good. Okay, and we collected even more norms. So this just shows the mean horizontal and vertical association ratings for each category of words. So these are the horizontal association words. These are the vertical association words, but we also collected more norms about them. So number of letters, number of syllables, lexical frequency in the English corpus and concreteness ratings. And yeah, in these control variables, there were no big differences. Maybe the exception here is concreteness, but we later used that as covariate in our analyses and it didn't, didn't matter much. Okay, good. So the idea is uh, then we took these words and wanted to present them to participants. And we wanted to, to present them in a way like this. So um, we wanted to present each participant with a crossword array, although these are not really crosswords because the words don't touch or cross each other for better legibility. Um, where, words, uh, where we have 10 horizontal association words and 10 vertical association words from the pool of uh, these word types that we have, right? So that five of them will five of each category will be horizontally presented, like uh, sawing is a horizontal association word presented horizontally. Um, five vertically presented, so running is also a horizontal association word, but presented vertically, and the same for the vertical association words, right? I mean, twenty words was our guesstimate of the maximum number of words that people would be able to recall after some distractor task in between and so on. I come to the details of the study uh, later. Okay, um, to avoid results being affected by the particular combination of words, we wanted to present each participant with a unique combination of 10 a horizontal association and 10 vertical association words. Problem, how many subjects are required if we want to present all possible combination of 10 horizontal and 10 vertical association words out of 43 and 51 respectively per array? The answer is about 100 million times more than, number, more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And that is a bit tough to find enough participants for this. So what we did instead was uh, we determined the actual word samples for the crossword arrays um, via trial and error. So basically we use the brute force random sampling technique with balance checks, right? But in a reproducible way using R, so we have an R script for that. If, if you want to replicate the study, feel free. Uh, you can use uh, the same scripts and everything. Um, so eventually we selected 80 samples, so 80 word combination, a combination of 20 words each ensuring reasonably balanced occurrences of words. So each of the 94 words occurred at least 11 times and at most 24 times across the 80 samples. 10 of the samples, or 10 words of the samples were higher association words, 10, the other 10 words, but, uh, higher association, uh, horizontal association words and the other 10 vertical association words. And half of the words per category were randomly allo allocated to, to the horizontal and the other half to the vertical presentation condition. And we then created a counterbalanced batch of 80 further samples in which presentation conditions per word were flipped relative to the first sample. So we required 160 participants all together with, and, and we made sure by this counterbalancing shit that uh, there were reasonably balanced occurrences of words and fully counterbalances uh, presentation conditions per word. Now, why did we want uh, the occurrences of words to be reasonably balanced? Because of the statistical analysis, right? So we wanted to estimate how generalizable effects that we find are across the words and to um, estimate by item random slows, you need a sufficient number of occurrences per item and things like that. So. This is, this is purely or, or truly confirmatory research and you really have to anticipate a lot of how you analyze data and so on when planning um, uh, the actual study. Okay, good. So the crosswords looked like this. Um, yeah, we basically you use these allocations uh, to, to manually, and that my poor student had to do this, create 160 crossword arrays for encoding in PowerPoint. 
That's the nice thing about studies like this. It can be done with very uh, cheap equipment. So just you just need a laptop and PowerPoint controlling the timing and things like that. And here are two counterbalance examples. So there's one example from the first batch, and that's another example from the second batch where presentation conditions per word are flipped, right? And you can see that uh, the crosswords from the second batch are not exact 90 degree rotation. So everything was spatially kept quite arbitrary, right? Okay, good. Any questions? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so since there were 160 unique crossword areas for encoding, we recruit, recruited 160 participants for the experiment. And we made sure that most of them, actually 93%, were not psychology students because they know about memory uh, research and, and so on. Um, and yeah, we wanted to use as, as naive participants as possible. So Ricarda uh, recruited a lot of participants from other disciplines or campus and not psychologists necessarily. Okay, so the design was a two by two design crossing the factors word type, horizontal versus vertical association and word presentation, horizontal versus vertical, where both factors were actually manipulated within subjects because in each array, the participant sees 10 horizontal association words, 10 vertical association words, and five of each category in the vertical or horizontal presentation condition. So everything is within subjects. But uh, at item level, uh, presentation was uh, within items because of the counterbalancing and uh, word category, of course, between items because a word can only be horizontal association or vertical associ association, but not both. And therefore, the mixed effects model for the analysis had to look like this in structure. Probably a bit boring, but Bodo will appreciate that. Okay, good. So... This is, this is the procedure that we use in this experiment. So um, first of all, we sold this experiment. So we use a mild form of deception as an experiment uh, studying the influence of word arrangements on subsequent mathematical problem solving. So there was always an encoding phase. So they saw an array like this, had to study it for about two minutes, right? Then there was a distractor task where they had to so solve as many uh, mathematical equations within my, one minute as possible, right? Like these, and that was always the same for each participant. These uh, areas were unique for each participant. And then unbeknownst in advance to the participants, there was a surprise recall task. So we didn't tell them that later there will be um, a tested for memory of the words. Basically, when this task finished here, we just gave them a sheet of paper. Oh, by the way, the experiment is not quite finished. Please write down all the words you can remember from the initial uh, uh, crossword phase of the experiment, right? Okay, but the nice thing is that you can do everything uh, quite cheaply on PowerPoint, controlling the timing, so as a slideshow, basically. And uh, the, the whole experiment takes way less than 10 minutes. So it's all done very quickly and you can collect a lot of data from participants. Okay, good. So now the slides. Okay, now since this is a confirmatory study and I, I really I really force myself to do this anytime I run a new study these days, so we pre-registered everything. So before collecting any word recall data, we pre-registered our hypotheses, design, materials, sample size, procedures, and analysis on the Open Science Framework, which happened in October 3, 2019. And fortunately, data collection was finished, uh, started in uh, October 14, and ended shortly before the pandemic started. So it gave us plenty of time for analysis, right? Um, okay, now what we also pre-registered is how we code our data. So uh, we had these two uh, dependent variables that we are interested in, namely correct word recall and retrieval rank. So for correct word recall, what we did was for each word in the participant's crossword array, there were 20 words per array, we coded whether it was correctly recalled giving a score of one or not, score of zero. So there's 20 codes per participant, right? So this is an example of fake uh, uh, handwritten uh, uh, record list from a uh, hypothetical participant. And um, 
In our coding, we were actually quite lenient. So word form related deviations from the original presentation. So the, the participant here said swim, although it was uh, presented as swimming, right? Uh, were treated as correct uh, recall of the word. But words in the recall list that were not presented like float, although it is semantically related to swimming or something like that, uh, they were treated as incorrect intrusions. And these intrusions happen in recall research or word recall research all the time, right? So especially semantic, semantically related intrusions, synonyms and so on, often uh, uh, enter the word, the recall list, uh, uh, although these words were not presented. Okay, so these were treated as incorrect. Uh, for retrieval ranks, so for each Correctly record word in the recall list, we recorded its serial position. So, uh, and in this case, we didn't ex uh, exclude intrusions or repetitions first. So, for example, ironing was uh, correctly recorded. So, retrieval rank one, swimming, retrieval rank two, three, and so forth. Um, there's one skip here. Five was an intrusion word that was simply sk skipped, and so on. The remaining 14 words from the presentation in this example all score missing values because they were not re correctly recalled. Okay, then we transcribed everything into data sheets which were prepared uh, or pre-prepared, right? And now some results, finally. Okay, so what we found is, and that I find quite reassuring is that on average of the 20 words presented during the encoded, encoding phase, the average participant recalled about six plan, plus minus three words correctly. Now that raises associations with Miller's magic number seven plus minus two that is known in memory research. And our figures come close to that, right? Okay, um, only four participants recalled fewer than two words. And only two participants achieved the observed maximum of 16 recalled words. So they deserve a batch because I think that's quite difficult to do. Okay. Uh, the total set of recalled words contained all 94 items. So that means there were no non-retrievable items or items that no participant ever retrieved, right? Okay. Uh, the retrieval ranks of correctly recalled words, of course, range from 1 to 16. And uh, there were 27 participant data sets, so about 17%, that had intrusions or repetitions in the recall list. And we actually pre-registered, so we will look at all the data and only the data where no intrusions or repetitions occurred. Doesn't make any difference because here is the bombastic result. So uh, this is our correct word recall um, dependent variable. And this is basically the likelihood of um, uh, recalling a word correctly in the recall list as a function of horizontal versus vertical presentation and type of words. So uh, the black solid lines here are the horizontal association words, the dashed open symbols uh, lines are vertical association words. And you can see a clear interaction pattern and it was hugely significant. Uh, and that doesn't really depend on whether you look at the overall data or after excluding trials with intrusions or repetitions in the recall list. Boom. So uh, yeah, I've never seen such a clear data set that I actually predicted before, right? So that worked. Um, but you can also see here that the, the effect here um, is mainly carried by the vertical association words, so the dashed line here. So there's a clear presentation effect. For the horizontal association words, there is no effect of presentation whatsoever, right? And that is a bit um, not so nice. And actually, in uh, in uh, I, this interaction was accompanied by a uh, main effect of presentation. So, vert in general, vertical as uh, vertically presented word words were remembered better than horizontally encoded words, right? Then we'll come to that later. Okay, in terms of retrieval rank, we found, uh, although it looks like an interaction bit here when you in exclude uh, intrusions and repetitions, but actually we didn't find any significant, significant effects whatsoever. I wouldn't say there is no effect, but uh, the data are just inconclusive about this. You can also see that the error bars here, um, standard error bars are much proportionally uh, much wider 
uh, for these for these data than for these data. So that's the reason why there were no clear effects. But the effect came out in one dependent variable, namely likelihood of correct uh, recall. Okay, so the main conclusions from this um, is that the hypothesis was confirmed in one of the two measures considered. So suggesting that spatial associations of words, when you compare carpet versus leather, so horizontal association versus vertical association words, that interacts with horizontal versus vertical presentation during encoding or reception during encoding, such that words that are encoded congruently with their spatial associations are more likely to be recalled. And looking at simple effects, this interaction is mainly carried by the vertical association words like ladder. There were no clear effects in retrieval ranks, so that might suggest, or maybe not, because they're inconclusive, but it might suggest that the two factors are more relevant for encoding and retention of word information, so that is driving recall likelihood, rather than for ease of retrieval during the retrieval stage of the experiment. So overall, that supports the perceptual symbol hypothesis in a previously neglected domain, namely free word recall. But there are also some open questions, of course. And I'm nearing the end of my talk, so I'll keep everything nice, uh, brief, and tidy. Okay, so uh, one question is, why is there no simple effect of presentation for, uh, for horizontal association words like carpet, right? So this pattern here, these are the horizontal association words, no effect of presentation whatsoever. Now, the, my take on this is that recall performance is often enhanced when encoding requires more cognitive effort, right? And has been shown in various previous memory studies um, before. Now, vertical encoding or vertical reading is indeed very effortful. So there's eye-tracking research confirming that. So this marquee's presentation or vertical uh, presentation was is really very effortful and requires a lot of effort in reading. And that could lead to deeper encoding and better recall in general. And that might um, offset the effect of presentation for horizontal, horizontal association words, right? Um, so the expected presentation contrast for horizontal association words may just be offset by, by such a general recall advantage for vertically encoded words. Okay, so one way to test this, you could, for example, replicate a study in Japanese or Chinese where readers are much more accustomed to vertical reading. It's much easier for them because it's more frequent. And uh, so my prediction would be that you, the general vertical presentation advantage should disappear and we get a nice crossover interaction. But um, yeah, I, I need to get funding to do this. <laughs> uh, what we're currently doing is um, uh, changing perspective and we just replicate this study with spatially unbiased words. So something like diesel, product, measuring, stench, sphere, all words that don't have a strong horizontal or vertical association. And if they show a general uh, recall advantage for vertically uh, or for vertical presentation, then would, that would support the idea that, yeah, there's this just vertical encoding ad advantage, which might offset um, the effect for horizontal association words in the previous experiment. So this is currently underway, but yeah, doing this in Japanese would be really cool as well. Okay. Uh, we also looked at, because some of you might ask themselves, is whether there is a strong presentation contrast for, uh, or whether the strong presentation contrast for vertical association words is mainly driven by downward association words like falling or bungee or something like that, that is in line with the vertical reading direction. So when we read or encode vertically presented words, we read from top to bottom, right? And indeed, we have words in our vertical association category that are more downwards, like falling, but some of them are more upwards, like rocket or uh, rising and things like that. So what we just did was a descriptive analysis based on intuitive classifications of vertical association words into downwards, upwards, and unclear. So downwards would be rain, bungee, falling, drip, digging. Upward words would be ascending, rising, tower, upright, rocket. And there were a couple of words where we were unclear what category, subcategory these words should fall into. 
like cane, pole, candle, spine, and ladder. But when you look at the descriptives here, so just look at the um, presentation effect for each of these vertical as association subcategories, it doesn't seem to make a difference anyway, right? So there's for all of these subcategories, there's about the same effect, same slope of an effect um, uh, of presentation. So when it's vertically presented, it's better recall than when it's horizontally pre presented. And it doesn't matter whether you have an upward association downward association or uh, unclear association. So this is the final slide. Well, I hope I'm uh, well in time. So the present study provided additional support for the perceptual symbol hypothesis, Larry's theory, uh, in the domain of short-term memory, memory this time. So we found better recall performance when words are encoded in line with their horizontal or vertical spatial associations. And uh, that adds uh, to the evidence, showing evidence in the other direction, so that when, when you're presented with certain concepts or, or understand certain concepts, it prepares you for certain motoric actions like driving saccades upwards, downwards, and stuff like that. Okay, so numerous studies have shown that linguistic concepts activate spatial representations and motoric responses. Uh, and uh, here we have found evidence in the other directions from perceptual representations of words, or is horizontal or vertical reading, to accessing their concepts in memory. Okay, and that is it. Thank you very much.